Okay, the next text over here. Can you dig it? Well, I hope you're digging it. I'm having lots and lots of fun here. And what I'm going to do on this, I'm going to do something a little bit different on this guy here. Uh, I'm going to take my text here, and I just left it as a regular white fill with a black stroke just to give you sort of a blank canvas to start with here. And I'm just shift-clicking all of my letters here. And I'll leave it up to you to choose a fill color, whatever fill color you'd like. I'm going to grab something from my swatches palette here. Maybe I'll go with a green. And I'm going to take my fill. I'm going to isolate or target my fill. And I'll do something like this. I'm going to go up to my effect menu and then down to path and then offset path. This is one that I find I use quite a bit. And you can see it's made a mess of this already because I have a positive 10 point offset here. I'm going to use a negative 5 point offset. And now I have something like that. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Always switch it. I'll try three. So now I have something like this happening. Okay. Now let me show you a neat little trick. You can see what's happening here. I'm getting this overlapping happening, which I'm not a huge fan of. So let me show you a couple of my own tricks that I use for text here. I absolutely love goofing around with comic book style text and effects and so on. And if you've seen any of the books that I've been involved in or my website, uh, tentonbooks.com, you'll see all this sort of effects all over the place. I just love playing with this. So here's usually what I do. I'm going to take all of this here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is group it because I don't want to lose it. I'll group it there and then I'll paste in back, which is control B or command B on the Mac. I want to make sure that it's actually there. There it is, the double text there. I'll just undo that twice. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lock this text here. So just control two or command two on the Mac, grab the text in the background. And what I'm going to do is first of all, I'll increase the stroke weight here. You can go as thick as you want. Obviously, thicker lines gives you a more dramatic effect here. And now that I have that, I can unlock the text on top. So control alt two or command option two on the Mac. And now what I want to do is take my stroke here and switch it to white. So over my color palette there, I'll choose white and I'll crank up that stroke just a little bit. And now I have this type of an effect happening. This is how I've been creating a lot of the text that we've been using throughout our series here. Just simple little effects like that. Now that I have something like this, I'm going to grab both text objects here. And by the way, the reason why I doubled my text there is because I didn't want what we were getting over in the other text, which was sort of that overlapping effect. So anyway, I'm going to take all of this here and I'm going to go effect and then down to stylize and then over to drop shadow. And I'll throw on a quick drop shadow on my text here. There it is looking pretty awesome. Look how cool that is. I love text. Anyway, we'll go back to effect here and down to warp. Let's throw a quick warp onto this guy here just to see how things are going to turn out. Whoa, look at that. Isn't that fun? Look at that. I could do this all day. I wish someone would pay me for this. This would be fantastic. Anyway, I digress. I'll do some kind of a neat effect here. Something like that. Just through goofing around with different fills and strokes and arcs and warps and effects and all kinds of fun little things. I could totally picture this on a t-shirt or on a fridge magnet or something like this. And by the way, there's one nagging thing here that's driving me nuts. The C. The C is getting covered up by the A. I don't like that. So I'm just going to quickly grab all of this. Look at that. That's still my original lines there. I'm going to ungroup this. And you can see that right away when I ungroup, everything just goes to heck here. So you know what I'm going to do is rather than ungrouping, I'm just going to do an undo here. And I'll go up to my object menu and check this out. I'm going to go down to expand appearance. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, I just converted my effect to actual paths here. Now, let me undo this. I want to show you this here. I'm going to undo, go back to where I was. I'll hit control Y or command Y to show you what Illustrator sees here. So there's my original text there. Can you dig it? I'll go back to preview, control Y, command Y, and then I'm going to go and expand my special effects. So I'll choose that, switch back into the preview one more time, and that's what's happening there. Look at all that. That's crazy. There's doubling up of my paths here. Don't forget I have the one in the back. Remember that? So I should go and expand that guy as well. Anyway, I'll go back to my preview. I will grab this guy here, ungroup it, control shift G, command shift G on the Mac, grab my C there ungroup it one more time. There he is there. I finally isolated him and I'll simply move him all the way to the front. Control shift, close square bracket on the PC, 
Command Shift Close Square Bracket on the Mac. There's my text. You can have so much fun with this stuff. Anyway, you get the gist. Let's finish this off here. I got to go and fix up my coffee here. So we have a couple of these here, Jeff after coffee and Jeff before coffee. I'm going to move my layers out of the way and I'll also move my appearance out of the way. Here it is. You might want to zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to do one of these with you and I will leave the other for you to play with. How about that? So I've got three pieces of text here. Everything's outlined. You could have live text, by the way, if you wanted to, but you saw earlier that there are some limitations with working with live text and your effects and so on. So usually what I do is I just outline everything so it's much easier. And I think what I'll do is keep things fairly simple here. I've got some black fill here. I'm going to hit the D key on my keyboard. That gives me this regular plain old default fill and stroke. If you want to use some different colors, go ahead and use your swatches or your color palette or whatever you'd like. I'm going to do the same trick that I did before. I'm going to grab my name here, Jeff, copy it, paste it behind, increase the stroke weight. There it is there. Grab my original name on top. See, there's two of them there. Grab my original name here, switch that stroke to white. So now I have this effect here. That looks pretty cool. Grab all of that. And I'll go up and apply one of my warp effects here. And if you want to start using some of the others, go for it here. I like to keep things fairly simple. I love my arcs here. I use arcs all the time just because they're so much fun. I'll do something like this and maybe something like that. There we are. Maybe I'll put it on a slight angle here just by rotating it. Something like that. And that's really all there is to it. I would essentially repeat the same steps for the before and then coffee as well. So I'll just do one more here quickly with you. Here's my text. I always hit the D key on my keyboard just to start with the defaults. Maybe I'll set my fill color, something like this. I'll copy it, paste it in back, crank up that guy's stroke weight, back on the front guy here, switch that guy to white, or maybe a different color, of course, if you want to use a different color, increase my stroke weight there a little bit. Now, I've got to grab both of them, but I've got this guy. This is actually a mask, by the way. I've got this mask in the way here. So maybe I should take this mask and lock it down, Control-2. Then I can grab both my items there, both my instances of text. And I'm going to reuse the same arc that I had used before. So I'm going to go Effect and then Apply Arc. There I have the same arc that I had on Jeff. And if I can get my double-headed arrow here, there he is. Sometimes a little tricky to get him there. Do something like that. I'm just using my up arrow on my keyboard to kind of nudge this into position. Grab my name. Maybe I'll pop him on top. Something like that. I will leave coffee up to you. I will leave the Jeff and the after and the second occurrence of coffee up to you as well. Anyway, there you go. Lots and lots of fun with effects and arcs and all kinds of fun things on text.